Good morning, everyone. Um, just give me a second. I need to maybe put this up a little higher. I have a brand new phone holder, phone mount, and I'm super excited to use it today. Um, but I wanted to get in nice and close because we're going to do what I need to show you is um, it's finicky a little bit. So I'm in a little bit closer. But oh, by the way, it's Chris Taritzkis. Um, at simply creating with close to my heart dot com or or with simply creating with close to my heart and um yes, I guess I'm a little bit sort of out of sorts here um let me get focused all right, so what we're gonna do is I showed you a little sneak peek of some of these trees, so this is our technique Tuesday episode four. This is a layout that I learned how to do at our album retreat back in October, and I thought, what a fun little thing for us to do as a Technique Tuesday because this tree looks really cool and so this was the one page and um and this is the other and I know you can't really see the whole thing sorry about that um but again like I said I want to show you up close the instructions and how to put these together they're really really simple very straightforward and um so I'm going to show you and I'm also going to show you how to put it on a card, which is really fun. All right, so what you're gonna do is if you want five layers, so one, two, three, four, five, the idea is with each of these, you would make them, you're gonna cut triangle, or rectangles, pardon me, rectangles that are half as high as they are long. So you decide what your measurements are gonna be. Um, and um and for a layout sorry i forgot my little book that had my measurements written down so i could tell you um i'm just grabbing it i'm yeah i'm all over the place this morning sorry about that um so for a layout you would do probably an inch in difference in size so reduce it by an inch so these ones here are the same size as the top ones over here and um and so they, they're they all one inch smaller than each other. And I think we started with this one was six inches or seven inches wide. And then half that height in a rectangle. Okay. So, but I want to show you how you can do this technique on a card. And I started with this one, but with just the three, it didn't look as nice. And so I liked the five. So for a card, and I'm going to show you a really quick look at what I did with the card. Um, for the card... I did, um, I reduced the increments by a half an inch. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside and then I'm going to show you what I did. So with this one, it is two by four is the starting. And then you go down, like I said, a half an inch each time. So this one is, um, or sorry, a quarter of an inch. How did I think? Half an inch in length, half an inch in length. Sorry, half an inch in length. And then to get the half, it's now one and three quarter inch wide or tall, right? And then this one is three inches long by one and a half. This one is two and a half inches long by one and a quarter. And then your smallest one is one or two inches wide by one inch. Okay, so the idea is you could score this ahead of time. Now our paper, I'm using evergreen. Our paper is, of course, double-sided with different shade. So what you want to do is what the shade that you want to show on the actual tree needs to be on the underside. So I, in mine here, did the dark side. So that this is the side I want. I'm going to turn it over. So the idea is you're just going... You can score first if you want, but I don't think you use a bone folder it, or even just something like the edge of a block you are going to fold it down each corner to the middle and then you do the same with the other side each corner to the middle meet the middle and what i love about this is the fun with this tree is the tips aren't going to really be seen except for maybe the top one and it's up to you. So again, because I want the dark side to show, I'm going to flip it over. And I find it easier actually to go up. 
And so like our, our um, all of our cardstock has two shades. One is the front side is the main shade, the, the one that is advertised or that you'll see the swatches of in our catalog or online. Um, and then the back side is the lighter um, side of that. So there's the next one, flipping it over. And you'll see, sometimes I don't get it perfect. I'm also rushing on here. You can be as careful as you want. And that's, I guess, where this, the scoring might come in handy. But I just didn't feel like I needed to score it all ahead of time. Um, it takes a lot more time figuring out the actual measurement and how, where to score it and everything than it did to fold it. So scoring would have taken probably twice as long. Oops, flip it over. Make sure you're, the side you don't want is up. And you can do this with pattern paper. Um... You can do this, with, yeah, like I'm doing with cardstock. I wouldn't recommend glitter paper or something like that. That might not look so nice. Then what I'll also do is tell you what I use, what products I use to decorate my card in just a minute. And we have our last one. So this morning's been a bit of a crazy morning as I got ready for today. I can't, it looks so beautiful outside. Our snow is unfortunately going to be melting very soon, I'm sure. Because we're getting rained tonight. It will all be gone and Jonathan will be sad. <laughs> all right, so the other thing that you need is some foam tape or pop dots or something like that. Okay, so actually what we're now going to do is I'm going to open all of these up. Except for the bottom one. We're going to start on the bottom. And this is how we assemble them. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to cut a small piece with my Microtip non-stick scissors. And I'm actually going to oops, cut this in half because I don't want a very large piece. I don't want it to show or stick on the back. What I'm going to do then is flip it over. Hey, if you're watching, say hi. I can't see who's watching. Um... I'm going to put my piece right there in the top on the back, okay? Now I'm going to take my le next largest piece. Um, let's put that on my hand so I don't get lost. Take the backing off. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this maybe about a half an inch, or kind of like a border. I hope that's coming across well. And just line it up right in the center and um, with the points and just push it down. So you can imagine this tree is going to have a lot of dimension. All right. So now I'm going to take my, so there's what the back is starting to look like. I'm going to take my piece of foam tape and I'm going to, the other piece, and I'm going to put one there. I'm going to open up the next largest piece, take my little bits off. And again, I'm going to line it up with about a half an inch. Just line it up a little. You can use the lines on your Versamat if you need to. Give it some pressure. All right, we're going to cut another piece of foam tape. And I'm using the regular foam tape, not the thin. Put that on my hand. Close that back up. Flip it over. Put the next one on. Oh, my little backing came off all by itself. <laughs> So I want to know, are you creating Christmas cards already and how many have you done? Do you do lots of Christmas cards? Do you do just a few? Do you do a whole pile in bulk? Um, do, or do you do, yeah, just a few special ones? What do you do? I see Debbie and Jennifer. Hello. Now I have this one last piece and I'm going to put it the other way because it's important that it doesn't show at the bottom. All right, here's my tiniest little one. Good morning, Jennifer. All right, there's my last one. Push it down and fold it up. Okay, so can you see? There's kind of, we're getting there, our tree's getting there. We're not done yet because we don't want any of this to go flying. So now 
we're going to open up all the flaps and we're going to use some more foam tape to attach them and this one you really don't need very many very big pieces so again and i'm just going to put it right there on the very tip right there and right there there's the bottom layer is done so remember again choose your largest size of rectangle right your largest size of rectangle how wide do you want your tree to be at the bottom that's your first measurement then your the height of your rectangle is half of that so if you're starting at four inches wide you're going to do two inches high then if you're doing a card you will want to go up by half inch increments in the length so as you go up you'll go to three and a half by one and three quarters and so on if you want to do a layout and have a big tree, then you'll go up by one inch increments. So let's say you start at seven inches, you'll, your next sized rectangle would be six by three. And that will give you the right sizing for your um, tree. Now, I didn't really measure how far apart these pieces were as I laid them on top of each other and put all the layers together. But if you are doing a big tree, you might want to do it um, about an inch apart. But you, I mean, you kind of play with it. How does it look? Maybe before you put the foam tape on, you might, um, you might do, just lay them out and see, okay, well, how do I want this to look? And that kind of thing. All right. So there is our tree. Now you'll see it has lots of dimension to it. So because there's now, there's a, a, there's three layers of foam tape on there really. So lots of different um, opportunities. Now you could choose to put it on your project this way. Um, I personally prefer this way. I think I love the line there. It gives some more interest, but you, again, you might like it this way. So let me just bring in these layouts again so you can see. So this is a large tree. I'm going to put it down on my mat here so you can see it really well. Let me just pull that up. Um, so here's the two different sizes. So this one was, I think, seven inches, like I said, and went up by one. And this one started at four or five, five, I think, and went up. Um, and then this is the other one. So here's some examples. Like those are some examples of how you could decorate up your tree. You could use our pennant banner, pennant banner alphabet. <laughs> Sorry about that. And um, use the stamps and make a banner across of it. Across it. That's how we did with these ones. This one has a sticker at the top of it. These ones have stars, which is kind of what the, our wood stars actually and um and yeah so those are some examples this down here this joy is a sticker from the comfort and joy collection which i don't know if we still have in the online only section of our website but um so let me show you my card again and so this one i used my favorite wood grain paper again <laughs> i love my wood grain paper i actually just bought some more <laughs> And um, I decorated it up with stickles and our stickles glitter glue and liquid pearls. So the ones I used were platinum and carnation red. And then I did, I used candied apple distress ink, oxide ink, and I just sponged it on top of this wood star, which is the same thing that was done on the uh, layout. For this here, you'll see I also added some stickles on the banner and I had a little mishap my liquid pearl all of a sudden did a little um spit <laughs> it spit a little bit and landed just a tiny little dot right there but I couldn't clean it off so it's there oh well and then what I did is I used two stamp sets from our core catalog to create this banner this is the first one 
And I know that doesn't look like Christmas, does it? But I made it Christmas. <laughs> and I stamped, I cut, thin cut and stamped this one, the banner with archival ink, archival black. And then I just flipped it around. It's supposed to go with these sentiments here, but I chose to use. So this is um, Wishing You Everything. It's number Z3779 if you want the thin cuts and the stamp set. It's in our core catalog. And then for the sentiment, I used Seasonal Borders. It's D1976. And I used this image, this sentiment. So I even cut it apart. I've been using this so much. Um, and what I did, because our stamps are acrylic and they just peel off, I actually bent it on the block so that it matched this banner and it fit in there just beautifully it's right on the very edges and i was a little bit worried it wouldn't look good but it works i like it and so now i have this card that i can send for christmas um and maybe it'll go to somebody who would forgive my little mistake like my parents <laughs> all right so that is how you make a paper tree and like i said you can put it this way or this way and I realize mine's a little bit crooked you just work with it a little it'll move slightly oh I should mention though um, because this has so much dimension already you probably don't want to attach it with with pop dots and I actually was I used foam tape on or not foam tape you don't want to use dimensional so you don't want to use foam tape you don't want to use pop dots you would want to use a tape runner although I would recommend a liquid glue like um, like this one this will be your best bet because the um, it's so dimensional. It pops off the page a little bit with just tape runner. So there you go. And I will post the measurements in the comments for the rectangles in case you would like to make one. Thanks for joining me, ladies. And I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Again, if you would like to shop, simplycreating.closetomyheart.ca. All right. Have a great week, ladies. Bye.